اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ذكرنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله Welcome back to another session and I believe this is the last uh, lecture that we talk about the this uh, you know series of a series of lectures about the main theme of the chapter of the Quran because uh, actually tonight we are going to conclude and finish the explanation of Surah Al-Qasas and we will pause here inshallah rabbil alamin waiting for inshallah after Ramadan and after Eid then we continue with Surah Al-Ankabut inshallah and uh, the reason for that because we want to keep the next week starting tomorrow Juma ah, and lecture of Juma ah, then Saturday and uh, Sunday inshallah or Saturday nights we are going to wash the carpet inside the masjid so the masjid would not be available all the day on Sunday back to Monday for Fajr then Tuesday with the online lecture then Wednesday we will talk all this time about how to prepare ourselves for Ramadan almost the entire week to cover this topic and the rules related to the fasting ahkam, the rules of fasting, the rules of fasting. What do we need to know? What makes, what, what nullifies your fasting? What do you need to know in terms of to keep your, your fasting correct and right in, in, a, in a good form? Lots of things, inshallah, starting tomorrow from the Jumu'ah time, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. And we are expecting that we will start our first taraweeh by Wednesday night. So Wednesday night, inshallah, it's with like a, a like very high perception that it will be a, a percentage that will be, inshallah, the first night for the taraweeh, we will keep inform you and announce the, you know, with the video and WhatsApp uh, uh, broadcast to keep in touch always, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So let's focus tonight on Surah Al-Qasas to conclude the Surah, inshallah, rabbil alameen. You know, we finished yesterday by the story of Musa alayhi salam and how Allah had destroyed uh, Fir'aun and his soldiers. And while Allah highlighted in this Surah, what was the crime, the mistake, the disobedience that Fir'aun made? And we said, count many, as much as you can. Arrogance, disobedience, claiming the, 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 the divinity, killing the slaughtering kids, raping women, like whatever. He did everything. He oppressed people. He asked them to, to obey him. So, and but there is a story that there is a gap after the surah, after the story of Musa till the end of the surah, we cannot cover all of that. We cannot take the rest of the month of Ramadan just to finish surah, the rest of surah al qasas But there is a story I cannot in, like neglect. I cannot like pass by the surah without mentioning it because it has lots of benefits actually. This story of the story of Qarun, and it is only mentioned one time in the entire Quran. So if we left Surah Al-Qasas, there is no possibility to meet it again at any Surah. So if I finish these lectures, I feel myself like I, I had short comments here. I know I made a mistake. I supposed to mention that story. Who is Qarun? Qarun was amongst one of the members of the people of Musa salam. He was a Muslim. So you are talking now about someone who was a Muslim, a Muslim in the general definition, because Musa was Muslim, Isa was Muslim, Muhammad salam, was Muslim, Ibrahim was Muslim, Joseph was Muslim, Aaron was Muslim, under the definition of Islam is to submit yourself willingly 
to the commands of Allah. Under this definition, all of them were Muslims. So Qarun was one of the people of Musa. So he saw what happened with Musa alayhi He witnessed by his own eyes the miraculous signs. Number three, he saw how Allah had destroyed Fir'aun and his soldiers. And he saw the power, the authority, the greatness of the prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salam. And some narrations, and that might surprise you, some narrations said that he was from the family of Musa alayhi salam. And the, some narrations said that he was the cousin of Musa. The cousin of the prophet of Allah. Could you imagine that person after Allah had destroyed Fir'aun, other narration said that he was in the government of Fir'aun. So he was amongst those, you know, before the da'wah of Musa alayhi salam, he made lots of money because of his connection and he became so wealthy. And I will stop here, I will stop when I come to the description of his wealth. And that, that will, <laughs> that will let us know some people nowadays cannot be like Qarun. Like mention whatever, I don't want to mention names in the lecture. But you know the richest people on earth nowadays, they can, if you just imagined how wealthy he was, so they cannot get close to Qarun because Qarun, he was so wealthy to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, just the keys of his treasures over 10 men cannot carry it. Just the keys of the treasures. Over 10 men cannot carry those keys. And 11, 12 men, 15 cannot carry the, the keys of his treasures. So what about the treasures it, itself? And it was made out of gold. He had palaces made out of gold. He had fortune, big fortune. And he was that person that he was at the same time so arrogant. So what's the problem of Fir'aun? Arrogance. And the Qarun was arrogant. And now you can tell me, Imam, how come a Muslim? And he is arrogant. Yes, it happens. Nowadays we have Muslims, they don't come to the masjid, right? You have Muslims, they don't follow the, the instructions of Quran. You have Muslims, they don't follow the instructions of the Sunnah. As we said, we are not angels. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the jinn kind. We have righteous people, we have righteous jinn kind, and we have you know, the opposite of this. People are not righteous. So both of them, that's why I told you, Jannah is made for the believers. Jannah, that's why if we said roughly in our community, how many people, how many people supposed to come every Salah? Just give a rough number. So if you said like 500, 400, half of them, half of them, 200. So you're supposed to find every salah here, 200. That's one word. Where are the 200? They will be in Ramadan, inshallah. Don't worry, we are missing them. We are missing them. And the Eid Salah, and the night of Taraweeh, the night of uh, Laylatul Qadr, inshallah. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you, Qarun was one of the members of Musa alayhi salam. And Allah said, فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ He was an oppressor. 
And these are the treasures that Allah had granted. And every time Allah is talking about Qarun, Allah said, we, you saw we, that's the, for greatness, right? Because some people, uh, like non-Muslims, think when we say we about Allah, like Muslims have multiple gods. No, no, we are monotheistic. But we is the, the tool of greatness, the, 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 the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said, we had granted him so and so. We give him so and so. And, and now the problem is his people had warned him. Now we can ask, is that happened? Happened during the time of Musa alayhi salam or after he passed away? So most of the narration said after he passed away. Because there is no mention of Musa alayhi salam himself in the story. He didn't preach. He didn't talk with him. Because Allah said, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحُ His people said to him, do not feel like, do not uh, get so happy by your fortune, by your treasures. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ and the farihin here means mutakabbirin. Allah does not like those who have, have arrogance. And they said, وَبِتَغِي فِيمَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ And just seek of what Allah had granted you the hereafter. Means what? There is no problem to be wealthy. We don't want Muslims to be only millionaires. But we need them to be billionaires. We need like Derek to be billionaires. We need Brother Barakat to be billionaire. Brother, we need Dr. Yusuf to be, he does not want. Okay, <laughs> just he, <laughs> stay as you are. Okay. He ready, yes, he ready. Okay. <laughs> so we need all the Muslims to be billionaires, but that's not the that's not the key here. That's not the problem. Look at what, what the people of Qarun said, seek in what Allah had granted you, the hereafter and the pleasure of Allah. There is no problem to have money, but use that money to please Allah, not to be arrogant. You know, some people, and, and inshallah will forgive me for that. Like do not feel any pain when you hear me saying that because there are people in the dunya nowadays, they have no qualifications at all to give any fatwa, to give any decision, to interfere in great issues. They have nothing at all. They don't have wisdom. They have nothing except that they have money. And because of that money, People push them to the first draw to take the leadership. And that caused for the ummah, for the ummah to have the corruption. The truth has to be said, has to be mentioned. Who is Bilal? Can you tell me? Who is Bilal? When you say Bilal, what's the first thing? Adhan, right? Adhan. He is the one used to give adhan for Rasulullah Sallallahu Can you tell me what Bilal had before, what, what Bilal had when he was assigned as Muaddin? He was a slave, right? Before Islam. And he was poor. Habashi, he wasn't Mecki. He was Habashi from Abyssinia. And he wasn't a a family relative of Rasulullah. He has Ali ibn Abi Talib. Right? He has Abu Bakr and Umar. He has his he has Al Abbas, his uncle, Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. So why he didn't give it to his family relatives? He gave that authority, the one who will be giving the adhan for Rasulullah in his entire life. Bilal, the one who was slave 
the one who owns nothing. He's so poor, dark skin, came from Abyssinia, and he's taking that position. You know why? Because Islam is the religion of justice. No discrimination, no segregation. This is Islam. So when you have a brother here giving the adhan, and he is like, he, he's not used Imam. Imam, so why you give him the adhan? You know, you know, you see how he pronounces, you see how he talks, you see he is not used to that. Like he, his voice is vibrating. It's not your issue. Just mind your business. Mind your business. That's it. Islam is the religion that made every, all people are equal. And that's not my house or your house. That's the house of Allah. And the issue here, when Qarun was so arrogant, and his people give him the advice, use that money to build masjids, use that money to, to spend on the orphans. Because <laughs> I remember a, a, a very good statement from one of our professors in Al-Azhar. He said, you know what? The problem is that those people who do not have a business trade with Allah, what does it mean business trade with Allah? They don't give. They are so stingy. They do not run for long time for continuous charity for the sake of Allah. They have money, but they do not want to spend it. Why? They want to keep all that money for their children, which is great. Which something we Islam is not, you know, opposite to this. Now Islam is not against that. But at the same time, you will leave that money and you will die. But do you think that all the records of that money will, will stop after your death or it will continue? It will. It will continue. Because who earned that money? You. And that money will be given to whom? To your kids. If you started something bad before you die with that money, you will get bad deeds. As we have sadaqa jariya, we have sayyia jariya. Most of people in the masajid just talk about sadaqa jariya. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, sadaqa jariya, masha'Allah, brother. Okay, wait. Wait, continuous charity, we know that. But you have to tell people also about Sayyia Jariya, continuous bad deeds. Be aware, if you are subscribing on, on a certain channel, if you are paying monthly payments and that will continue after your death, for example, if you are sharing something on the social media, if you have contributed with something haram and people will still, and they will continue, get it after your death, that will have you to get bad deeds in your records while you are in your grave. Be aware of that. So now Qarun did not listen to the advice. Allah said one day, فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فِي زِينَتِهِ فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فِي زِينَتِهِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا When he came one day with his, you know, موكب, like, uh, like all the people, all the chiefs, all the advisors with him, and he is dressing gold, everything, bracelets out of gold, and they are carrying him. Harun, and they walk. You know the pharaohs in the past? Something like this. So when they are carrying him, Allah said, the people of dunya, they said, oh Allah, we wish 
if you give us like Karun, uh, and the people of the hereafter, they said, hey, you have to be aware. That's a piece of fire. That's a piece, do not get close to it. And let me tell you, whatever Allah had made for you, that's the best for you. Whatever Allah had decided, Allah knows. Allah knows your capacity. Allah knows if he gave you maybe more, that you would be corrupted. And, and sometimes, you know what? <laughs> when, I, when I see people, oh, Imam, look, he has Lamborghini. Imam, he has this, he has beautiful, big house. Wait, wait. Are you ready to take his full package? Or you want to just pick and choose? Go and check his, his life. See, the one who has this Lamborghini. You will never ever find a person who has 100% good life, happy life. If you found that Allah gave him 50% in will, he, he has problems in somewhere else. If he got wealth and good wife, nice children, he will have health problem. If he got shortage in money, Allah will give him good wife, good health, nice children. If he got money, if he got good wife, good children, good health, you will find him have no peace of mind. If you get, so this is the reality. Believe me, like so I know people, they want to pass by the houses and the families. They want to get the best on the list. You know that? The best on the list. So what's the best on, in, in Brother Ashmir's life? Okay, let's take it. And what's the best in Brother Ahsan's life? Then what's the best in Derek's life? Abdul Basit's life? Muhammad Ali's life? What's the, the best in, you know? In, so you collect all the best and you want to get all. If you get this, it would not be, it, it would not be, no, 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 would not be enough. And that's not the reality of the dunya. You are in dunya. You know what's the word dunya? Dunya, life. Okay, but what's the, the Arabic root of it? Dunya comes from the new. What's the new? Low status. Low status. Dunya, it worth nothing. That's why I like to say dunya to remind myself that it's dunya. At the end, it is dunya. It's a very law. It's very law. And then when it comes to it worth nothing, it's a very low level in this dunya. So, and they reminded him, hey, do, do not say that you want to like Fir'aun. I told you the people of dunya will pass by the Lamborghini. Oh, I hope if I got this one. You know what? I hope, yeah, Imam, I hope that I have this fancy car, a nice house. Okay. You don't know what Allah is going to take from you if you got this good car. You will get it. But you know what you are going to lose? If I, like, <laughs> subhanAllah. And, and, and many things, many things that we have we do not appreciate it. We took it for granted. If I told you, okay, tomorrow, inshallah, brother, I will give you $10 million. Tomorrow. So would you be grateful to me? Yes, Imam, I will keep 100 times a day saying to you, thank you. Thank you. I will make a recording. I will send it to you every day. Okay. You know what? You wake up every morning in a good health, which worth, if I told you, okay, you will get the $2 million tomorrow, but I'm sorry, forgive me. 
but you will not be able to wake up because you are going to die. Will you take it? Worth nothing. Worth nothing. If I'm going to die, what can I do with the money? Every day you wake up and that waking up worth more than the $2 million, you are not grateful to Allah. Yeah, okay, well, it's not a big deal, Imam. I woke up like every day. And some people, subhanAllah, that's ajeeb. Allah, that's ajeeb. They say, oh, Imam, I had a bad day. Oh, what a, what a bad luck. Bad day? You, you just, you have to be grateful to Allah that he granted you another chance every, every time. You know, that happens with me a lot. Every time when I wake up, then I feel myself, I'm still in the, in the, in the room. Uh, it's, okay, this is my bed. This is my side. Okay. Okay, you know what? I, Allah has granted me another chance to see what I'm going to do. It's another chance. Because if you read about where are our souls go while we are sleeping, uh, that will shake your heart. Because Allah grabs all the souls while we are sleeping. Then Allah will send those who will have another chance. And will keep those who will not be able to wake up anymore. Means they are died. They dead. So that means your soul was there with Allah. And Allah gave you another chance. So you wake up, you say, oh, I, I feel I had a bad day. What? There are people died in this night, hundreds, thousands, and you wasn't one of them. You need to be grateful to Allah. Qarun wasn't grateful to Allah. And you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed him. But he destroyed him when they asked, and they said, Karun, how did you get that wealth? They wanted to remind him of Allah. They said, how did you get that wealth? He said, Innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. I got it because of the knowledge that I have. I used my knowledge. Of course, you will hear lots of narrations. I don't want to spend more of the time about the the narrations that he got some knowledge, he can turn the dust into gold. And you will hear that a lot, that he has some knowledge and he had some chemicals that he can put on the sand of the desert, he could turn it to gold. You want to get this knowledge? Do you want gold? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Haram for, for the men. Okay. Alhamdulillah. We are the ummah of the concept of Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for everything. So now, I just wanted to tell you, he said, I got it because of my knowledge. Do we have people nowadays act, acting like Karun? Do we have? Yes. Okay, brother, mashallah, you got a PhD. Ah, oh, Imam, you know why? Because I'm so smart. Okay, where is Allah? Where is Allah who made you smart? You know, oh, mashallah, brother, that's a very successful business. You know why? Because I have lots of skills here. I put a perfect plan. I got my wife. Imam, without my wife, I couldn't do anything. Imam, without my cousin, without the money of my dad, then he puts you a like list made out made of 10 people and he forgets to mention Allah. Allah, the one who gave you everything. Relate, relate everything that you have for Allah. Yes, be grateful to others, but Allah number one, number one, fadlam min Allahi wa ni'ma. And, and I remember, I was so happy when the brother came and he said, Hada min fadli, huh? Hada min fadli, 
Rabbi. That's the, because of the favor of my Lord upon me. Remember that. And at the end of the story, Allah said, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ We had destroyed him. Allah made the, the land, the, the ground to be split and to swallow all his palace, all his fortune, all his treasures. One time, one time. So he got destroyed. Allah had made the, the earth to open, like the ground to be split. So it will take him with his servants, with his soldiers, with his treasures, with the keys. So if you found the keys, don't say that's for Qarun. Okay, don't say, Imam, I have the keys of the Qarun treasures. No, Allah had put it under the ground. So you cannot find it. And of course, lots of theories about nowadays, there are people, are some, some people are digging somewhere uh, in, in, in Egypt, and some people are digging somewhere the, the next to um, some Buhaira Lake. It's called the Buhaira Nasir. Nasser Lake, they call it, and they said under this lake you will find uh, the treasures of Karun. There are some people trying to dig there. Uh, uh, I hope that brother Matasim didn't dig one day. Did you try that one day there? Okay, that's why you have an iPhone, you see, because you sold one of those keys. Okay, <laughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu fikum. Uh, I'm sorry for taking too much time, but that was the final for this surah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.